to talk about uh, my top three tips for beautiful power ups. Uh, just a little intro for you guys that, and, and gals that don't know me. Uh, my name is April Dunham. I'm a partner technical architect at Microsoft. Um, I was an MVP before I joined in Power Apps, um, and that's just how you can reach me here on this slide. So definitely don't hesitate to reach out if, uh, if you have any questions or anything. Uh, so the things I wanted to cover today, I want to go over what I think, in my definition, makes an app beautiful some tips to make over your apps. I'll show a few demos, uh, leave you with some resources, and then hopefully have time for some questions and answers. All right, so first let's start with the art of the possible here. Um, I know probably a lot of you, um, if you've either just getting started with Power Apps or have used it a while, have probably built an app that kind of looks like what we're seeing here. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that because it's, it's functional and it gets you from point A to point B. Um, but what I want to talk to you about today is how you can go from something like this to something, you know, a little bit more beautiful, like kind of what we're seeing here, really a um, nice, visually appealing application that kind of does the same thing, but just looks and functions a little bit better. Uh, before, though, I, I dive into my tips here, I want to level set and talk about what I think uh, the components of a beautiful app are. So to do that, I've created something called the Power Apps Pyramid. Um, to use as a framework for building beautiful apps. So at the bottom of the pyramid, that foundation piece is performance. So I'm not really going to um, harp on that today um, in this time, since I'm really going to talk more about UX. Um, but performance is really key, because I'm sure we've all heard that expression that you can be really beautiful on the outside, but ugly on the inside. <laughs> we don't want our apps to be that way. Um, so performance is the inside of our app. We want it to be very nice and performant because if the app, you know, whatever you're building takes five minutes to load, your users aren't going to use it. So that is kind of the key foundation of any beautiful app, in my opinion. But building off top of that, that's when the next layer is your user experience. So that's really what I'm going to be focusing on today. And then, of course, the icing on the cake being branding. So how, you know, does it match your company colors? Um, does the typography match? Do you have uh, good visually appealing images in your company logo that matches all your brand standards? Things like that. So today I'm going to be focusing, like I said, on user experience. And, and what do I mean by user experience? Well, first I want to start out with a few quotes here that I think really kind of explain what I mean when I'm talking about user experience. And the first one is by Steve Jobs. He says, some people think that design means how it looks. But of course, if you dig deeper, it's really how it works. So a lot of people, when they think of user experience, they think, oh, it's just, you know, all the bells and whistles and how it looks. But really, it's, is it intuitive to your users? Um, does it, is it accessible? Things like that. And um, the other quote I like um, by Dan Rubin is, if you find an element of your interface that requires instructions, then you need to redesign it. So a really well-designed, beautiful app should just not really require any instructions at all. It should be so intuitive that users know exactly where to go and what's happening at all times. So these main things um, that make up user experience would be, to me, like easy to use, accessible, engaging, effective, and efficient. All right, so now that we've kind of set a uh, level set there, let's look at our first tip. So the first tip is to get inspired. Um, before you start building anything, we need inspiration. And I don't know about you all, but when I'm building a power app, I kind of feel like an artist, like I'm building a, a beautiful piece of work here. So every artist needs their muse or an inspiration for what they're building. So just like Donna needs inspiration when she's building her beautiful clothes, right? Um, so we, we need that same inspiration when we're working on our power apps. So there's lots of great resources out there to get inspired. Uh, the first one that I want to talk about is the power apps templates. So if you go to make.powerapps.com, um, you'll see that there's all kinds of templates out there already for you to get started. Um, hopefully, can you someone just confirm that you see Power Apps now if I switched my screen? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, April. great, thanks. Um, so if you go out here to make.powerapps.com and click on the Home tab, you'll see that there's this All Templates button. So this is a great place to kind of start getting some initial inspiration. Because these are pre-built templates, and you can kind of see, you know, like how are these templates functioning? So, for example, the help desk application here. 
you can do a live preview without actually building the application and just take a peek at some of the design elements and the uh, the UX that's going on in this particular template. So this is a great place to get started and get some initial inspiration for Power Apps specifically. Uh, the other one is the Power Apps community samples. So hopefully everyone uh, watching, if you've been using any Power Platform stuff for a while, have been to the Power Users community. So you just go to powerusers.microsoft.com. We have communities for each of the products. So Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI. And this is a great place where you can go not only to you know, join in discussions and ask questions if you're stuck on a particular issue, but also if you scroll down here, there's a uh, community app sample section. So I like to take a look at this section and see what other people are building. So this is like somewhere where people go out in the community and they'll post samples of apps that they've built. So for example, uh, Sancho built a branding app template, which is really great um, for building beautiful apps. Um, there's a champion app. So this is a great place as well to, to go and look at some samples of real life power apps that people have built and you can even download them. Um, makes it even that much easier to kind of copy some design elements. So. Uh, and the next, so those are the Power Apps specific uh, design inspirations. But then, you know, the, the next thing is you don't have to focus just on Power Apps when you're looking to get inspiration. Just think of app design in general, right? So what are some apps that you use on a daily basis that you think have really cool designs? Well, you can make that happen Julia, in Power Apps as well. Um, so if you go here, some two, two things that I like to point out for just general app um, inspiration. One is UI movement. Uh, so that's a great site that one of my friends actually uh, told me about a while ago. But it just is general design inspiration. So if you click on the UI inspiration um, tab here on the site, you'll see all kinds of examples of really well designed apps. And if you're wanting something specific, like, well, I want to see, you know, an example of a landing page because I need to build out a landing page for my Power App. You can filter it by the different categories of things that you're looking at um, and, and get some great inspiration here. Uh, the other one is actually Pinterest. I'm sure we've all probably used uh, Pinterest before. Um, so you can just look for, you know, even Power Apps design ideas or App UI design inspiration. This is a, a board that I follow on Pinterest to get some inspiration and see what, you know, things people are doing from an app design perspective. All right, and then uh, lastly, um, follow the hashtag Power Addicts on Twitter. And there are a few people out there, um, uh, GSFed, Gipa, uh, Yusuf, Alan Chai, uh, Sancho. Those are a few of the Power Addicts out there that are doing some really great stuff from a uh, UI perspective that you might wanna go and follow and um, see what they're doing and, and keep up with them. All right, the next big tip is to be mindful. So this tip is kind of a loaded one. There's a lot to it. So what do I mean by being mindful? Well, so if you started off and you're wanting to build a great app, now you've got your inspiration. So you have ideas of how you can maybe make it look nice. But before you dig in and really start dubbing your Power App solution, you need to ask yourself a few questions. The first one is why. So if you've ever read Simon Sinek's book, um, start with why you'll know that that's a really important question to ask yourself. So you'll want to ask, you know, do I clearly define, do I have the problem that I'm trying to solve clearly defined? Um, so that you have to start with that uh, no matter what when you're building an app. And if you have that defined clearly, then everything else will really fall in. But then aside from that, you want to kind of dive in a little bit more and ask yourself, well, where? Because this is really important uh, when you're thinking about building the app. So for example, one of the questions in the where category you might ask yourself is, will my users that are using this be inside or outside mostly? Because that can have implications on maybe the color scheme of your app. Maybe you need like a dark mode if they're gonna be in the high um, light situations outside in the field somewhere. Um, so the first question to ask yourself there. Another one, um, are they gonna be in like a, a Wi-Fi hotspot working from their home? Um, or a big urban city, or are they going to be out somewhere where there's a dead zone and they don't have any service possibly? So you might need to build in some offline capability into your Power App. So that's the where piece. The next piece is the how. So how will they be interacting 
with the application you're building. Will it be on a PC, a tablet, or maybe their mobile phone? So that will have implications on what template you choose when you're building your app and how you design it. Maybe if it's all three, you really need a responsive design um, in that case. So you want to make sure that when you're building it, it's optimized for the device that your users will be using. Also consider any integrations. So for example, if you know that your users will be wanting to consume your app within like the context of Teams, which is, um, if you're not doing that already, is a great use case for Power Apps building low-code Teams applications. Um, you might want to take advantage of, you know, A, also doing a responsive design so it fits within Teams really well, or maybe making it kind of match the theme of your general Teams environment or getting context from Teams. Lots of implications depending on how they'll be using that um, within different integration tools like Teams or SharePoint. And then finally, you'll want to ask yourself who. So get, go like down even deeper into who are my users? Are they from diverse geographies? Will I need multilingual support in my Power App? Um, are there any hearing or vis uh, vision issues? Because uh, if you remember anything about the mindfulness uh, piece of it, accessibility is key. Uh, we should always be building accessible Power Apps. And there's all kinds of accessible accessibility issues that you need to take into consideration. So obviously hearing uh, vision, so things like tab stops, um, but also color blindness and or vision, low vision. So making sure that the colors um, are good for people with low vision or color blindness. Keep all of those in mind um, and be mindful of that as you're building your apps. So I'm just gonna switch back over to Power Apps here and highlight a few of those things, particularly the accessibility aspect of it all. So here I have a training portal application. And um, for one, I have like a, a dark mode. So that's kind of good for um, high contrast situations. Um, now I might want to check, like how do I know from a Power App side if this app is accessible? Well, they make it fairly easy to do a quick accessibility check for your apps. So if you click on the little app checker icon, now, you know that this is where you can go and see if you have any errors with your formulas, but there's also a piece here for accessibility. So they're kind of highlighting for you, like what potential issues could you have from an accessibility standpoint? The most common ones are going to be tab stops because those that need to, um, with like vision or hearing impairments that need to use a screen reader are reliant on tab stops to tab throughout your application so that the screen reader um, can read back what it's on. So those are really important. So you'll want to go through your app, make sure that all of your controls and anything that you're using have those tab stops there. You can see I've did a bad job in this demo app of putting in those tab stops. The next big piece is your accessible labels. So again, you'll want to go into each of your labels here and make sure that it has a accessible friendly label so that the screen reader can read off what this is. So you've tabbed over to the save icon, for example, and it can read back that this is the save icon for a new training. Uh, and the next is focus. So really being able to highlight uh, with a border around which item that you have selected on the screen. So those are the three main things that the accessibility checker will check for in your Power App to make sure that it's accessible friendly. One thing, uh, some, some things that it's not showing is really the color. So it's not going to check for you to make sure that your colors are accessible for people of color blindness or low vision. So that's something that you'll need to go and do separately. So there's um, some good resources out there, which I'll point you to um, in my resources slide where we can actually check um, I'd like to load a screenshot of your application and see what it would look like, for example, with someone with color blindness. All right, and on to my last tip, which is kind of the biggest tip here, and that's to Marie Kondo your apps. Hopefully, we all are familiar and know who Marie Kondo is. Um, you know, she's famous for saying, "If it doesn't spark joy, then throw it away." So we can apply that similar concept to the design of our Power Apps. Because I threw one of my quotes up here, uh, clutter is the enemy of good design, right? So we want to reduce clutter, remove stuff that doesn't spark joy, and simplify your application because there is beauty in simplicity. So some clutter-reducing app hacks I have for you. 
first is to use tabs to reduce scrolling. So one of the biggest culprits of clutter is having so much information on your screen that you're having to scroll horizontally or vertically to see all the information. That's not great from a, a app standpoint, right? You want to reduce scrolling. So tabs are a great way to do that. So you can see from the screenshot, for example, they're doing that here. Like on the, the kudos to me and from me, you can filter and it just tabs between filtered views and you're reducing your scrolling. Another is flyout menus. So rather than having being overwhelmed at the top here with a bunch of options for where to go, you can have your traditional hamburger menu that expands out when you click it. And you can see additional options to go in and drill into different screens or sections of your app. Uh, the next is visuals. So more visuals, less text. So this is where I really love using some of the built-in icons that Power Apps offers, some icons that you can go download from other sources and use, and then SVGs. Um, I'll show you a quick example here in a second uh, how to use SVGs in your Power Apps to really give your app a little bit of oomph. And uh, components for reusability. So uh, adding in all these aspects, the tabs and the flyout menus, that's stuff that you probably want to use in multiple apps on multiple different screens. So building those as components will help save you some time. You can build it once and just add that into your multiple screens and have one central place that you control that code per se. Uh, and a bonus tip before I go back into the demo here is along those same lines of reducing clutter and making your app look better, uh, use the HTML control. So on the screenshot that you'll see here, this is a, an app that my friend Geetha created, and it's using the HTML to control and SVGs quite a bit here. So this is great if you do have a little bit of developer-ish chops, you know HTML and CSS, you can utilize the HTML control to do things like that you couldn't do with native Power Apps functionalities like box shadows, text shadows, gradients, um, adding some CSS um, to your text. Um, and even if you don't know uh, HTML or CSS, there's some free tools online that you can go and type in what you're wanting it to look like, and it will actually produce the HTML for you. So those are a few that I reference here that you could look at if you're if you don't aren't familiar with HTML or CSS. And I do have a video that really dives deep into all the things that this one HTML control can do. If you want to reference that uh, later on, since we don't have that much time to go into the details today. But on to the demo. So first, let's look at, uh, so what I talked about using visuals over text. So here, uh, this Time Away app is a perfect example of that. Rather than just having a big long list, kind of like we saw on that first uh, slide earlier of, you know, this was your request for sick leave or whatever, I have, I'm utilizing SVGs in here to show a donut chart so I can see visually that I've used uh, one day of my vacation. So it's just going to go down and down as I use up my vacation time. So it's just all done with an SVG. So there's lots of websites you can go out to and even download free SVGs. And if you're not familiar, an SVG is just a fancy type of image file that you can get some code behind and manipulate some properties in that to dynamically change the image. So what I did is I went out to a, a site and downloaded an SVG of a donut chart. To implement these in your Power Apps, you can just go in and insert a media image control. And in the image property, instead of pointing that to an actual image you upload, you can put in some SVG code. So you'll just append it with this data uh, image svg.xml and then wrap it in an encode URL function. And then you'll just paste in that code and you can pull in data from your Power App to dynamically fill in the color of the donut in this case, which is what I'm doing. So here you'll look, um, we have some the stroke dash array, which is just a way that you fill in the property of this SVG. And I'm getting my requested time off and just doing a little bit of math and dividing that by my total time off that I have available to me. Um, and uh, dividing that, by my total time off to get that value. I just have a label control in here to display the text, um, the days available. And this is all residing in a gallery that's pointing to my database where my time off balances are stored. So really simple use case to get a nice visual effect here. Um, as we go through here, um, if I click new request, so you'll see that as you go throughout this app, 
I'm never showing too much information at once. It doesn't look cluttered at all. I'm really doing it on a piece by piece basis. I'm gonna ask the user first, well, what type of time off are you requesting for? So uh, maybe this is another vacation time off. So then rather than having the user, once it goes to the next screen here, manually type in uh, the date to and from that they wanna take off, give them a nice interactive calendar, for example, like we see here. So I can just click on this calendar and select the days off that I want. And I always be communicating to your users, like here's the dates to confirm that you wanted, and that's five total days. So then now we continue to the next screen. So we're breaking it out piece by piece. Now we can see a summary of the total vacation days you requested, the available days, and what the new balance would be. We can make any adjustments as necessary um, and send that off. So never did I have to do really any really scrolling here. Um, nice, visually appealing app here. Um, and then I have, you notice I have a success message. So that's another key to a beautiful app is making sure that your users are always informed. So they know that the time off request was submitted and they can go back um, here and then see everything. Okay. All right. Um, the other one that, let's see, I'll switch back to my training actually. So I talked about components. Um, I'm using a left nav component, you might have noticed in here to kind of clean it up, the clutter on this landing page. I'll just go back here real quick. So this is an example of a fly out menu. So first thing you'll see here is I have a nice loading message. Um, so there's some stuff going on behind the scenes where it takes a little bit for the data to load. So I'm just communicating to the user that it's working. So this app, I'm showcasing some of those design elements like a fly out menu. So I can click this, see additional information of pages that I can navigate to and it shows on hides as I click it. And I'm also using the tabs. So here I'm showcasing task, but if I click discover, that's a new piece of content that I'm showing or hiding. So I don't have to scroll, but I can just break it out into these nice, easy to use tabs. Uh, I do have videos on how to implement this tab functionality on my channel. So you can go and have a deep dive on that later on. Um, and this flyout, so I, it works across all of the screens. So I can go like to my task, for example, um, see like a nice visual um, of my pending task and have this quick visual filtering going on here as well, which I, I also have a video for. Um, just simple things like this can really take your apps to the next level um, from a design standpoint. All right, so I did, I wanted to leave you all with some additional resources. Um, so the first was the one I talked about, those community app samples. Definitely go check that out. Get some inspiration, see what other people are building. There's also um, some component examples that Microsoft has released and put out on GitHub that you might wanna check out. So that calendar control that I just showed in the time off, for example, is a component that you can go and download from this URL right here. Um, in addition to that, on the Power Users community, there's a separate section for component samples. So you can go down there and find samples that community members are posting. Uh, that SVG donut that I just showed was I got from this site here, loading.io. There's a bunch of free SVGs and GIFs that you can download and use within your apps. Um, the Power Users video gallery is another great place to go and see people posting examples and how-to videos of some of the designs that they did. Um, and from the accessibility standpoint, these two uh, resources are great, the contrast checker and the color blindness simulator. So uh, low vision issues, you'll need to make sure that you have good contrast ratio in your Power Apps for accessibility. So this is a checker where you can put in your primary color and foreground color, and it will tell you if that passes the contrast test. Uh, in this color blindness similar simulator, you can actually upload a picture of your Power App and it will show you what that would look like to someone with different types of color blindness. So it's really eye-opening if you, because if you don't have that, you really don't think about it. So that really comes into play when if you're, if you find yourself relying on colors to indicate critical information in your app, like this field's required, for example, um, you might want to reconsider that and run that through that color blindness simulator. And then those are just resources here for my GitHub, YouTube, and blog if you want to uh, reach out and find any information that way. All right, well, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, and that's uh, just how to, how to contact me. <laughs>